Hey gang, and welcome back to another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, this video is going to be a little bit shorter. And if you're watching this, you are entering the wonderful world of carboxylic acid derivatives. So before we, we talk about what I want to talk about in this video, which is the difference in reactivities of these different carboxylic acid derivatives, I just want to make sure we're on the same page in terms of what is a carboxylic acid derivative. So we, if you're watching this, I'm assuming you have gone through and you know a little bit about carboxylic acids, but just so we're on the same page, right? What I did here, R symbolizes some generic, you know, chain. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's just a hydrogen. What is, you know, I'm showing you here is just the functional group that makes a carboxylic acid what a carboxylic acid is. So in terms of now, what is a carboxylic acid derivative? That's where you have something that looks like a carboxylic acid and originated from a carboxylic acid. You took a carboxylic acid and used it to create this new functional group. And that's what we have right here. So we're going to talk about the relative reactivities of amides, or if, you know, I've personally always been around people that say amide, but if you're around someone that says amide, potato, potato, I'm going to say amide, uh, esters. And this is sometimes included in courses. Sometimes it's not. I'm throwing it in here just in case it is in your class, thioesters, acid anhydrides, and acid halides, whether they be acid chlorides or acid bromides. So when we talk about the relative reactivities and what that means is, you know, who's more reactive than who here? What's the difference in reactivities? There are two things I want you to think about. I want you to think about how electrophilic the carbonyl carbon is. And the second is how good is the leaving group that is present. So what I mean by that, by the first one, right? How electrophilic is the carbonyl carbon? Meaning how strongly partially positive it is. Because when we start putting groups here, that can affect how partial positive our carbonyl carbon is. Sometimes it's a little bit more, sometimes it's a little bit less, right? And we know nucleophiles love positive stuff. And then the second is how good the leaving group that is present, how good is the leaving group that is present, is if we're going to attack these carbonyls like we're going to see, you know, when we do chemistry with these functional groups, we're going to have to boot somebody off, right? And of course, the more reactive uh, carb carboxylic acid derivatives will be the ones that have a good, stable, weak base to eject, to kick off when something else comes in to attack, okay? So if we take a look here. I did this on purpose. Going this way, carb, you know, this is reactivity increasing. So what I want to do is I'm going to start with most reactive and work my way back over here to the amide, which is the least reactive carboxylic acid derivative we have. So over here with the acid halides. So if I'm going to consider these two things, first, of, first, bleh, first and foremost, how electrophilic the carbonyl carbon, right? Let's tackle that first. Well, remember especially when we did our directing groups with electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. So the thing is when you go through these comparisons and you know what reason through who's more reactive than you know who else, it comes down to resonance and how much those resonance structures contribute to the overall hybrid. So yes, we can show resonance like this. And yeah, a resonance structure like this would show electrons going towards the carbonyl carbon. You know, and that would make you think that it's going to be less partially positive. But this resonance structure that these arrows indicate, think about this. That means chlorine would have to have and, you know, uh, take the burden of a positive charge. And we know the halogens hate positivity, right? They hate being, you know, partially positive, completely positive. So acid halides are your most reactive carboxylic acid derivative because... All of, all of the, you know, whatever halogen you have here, whether it's bromine or chlorine, it's not going to be lending its electron density towards the carbonyl carbon. In fact, what it's going to be doing is inductively stealing that carbonyl carbon's electrons even more, right? That's why we know that the halogens are actually, even though they were ortho pair directors, remember, they took electrons out of the benzene ring when we were doing EAS 
reactions and looking at you know group direction and whatnot. So these are your absolute most reactive carboxylic acid derivatives because the lat and you know the second thing is that when you go to attack here and you need someone to boot off, you're booting off Cl minus, Br minus. So the leaving groups are excellent. So most reactive all the way over there. And over here, it's a very similar argument. The leaving group, so, so as an anhydrides always throw people, I'm gonna erase this down here so I have more space, always throw people for a bit of a loop. And that's because they, you know, they're, they're so big, there's two carbonyls, what the heck's going on? But if you just look at one carbon at a time, so just assume we have a symmetrical acid anhydride here. The thing is, yeah, is this oxygen going to be, you know, pushing electron density over here and kicking these up? Absolutely, but it's doing that in two different places. So you still have two carbonyls here. They're gonna be, you know, the, the effect of this elect these electrons getting pushed onto this carbonyl is almost halved because it's happening between two different carbonyl carbons. And in terms of, so, so it's not like a major, uh, you know, reduction in the partial positivity of the carbonyl carbon, which is good because if nucleophiles are attacking, they are lovers of positive charge. The more positive these carbonyl carbons, the better and more reactive these carboxylic acid derivatives are. And in fact, if we have a leaving group, think about this. This is the leaving group. The leaving group is a carboxylate, right? It's a deprotonated carboxylic acid. So why is that such a good leaving group? Well, it is resonance stabilized. So what we have over here is two situations where we're not, you know, the additional, the, 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 the derivative groups that we have, you know, put on from our carboxylic acid, they don't reduce the positivity of the carbonyl carbon drastically. And the leaving groups there are excellent for something to come in and attack and kick them off. So that's why these are excellent, both very reactive, this more reactive than this. And then we move into what I would say are definitely our less, lesser reactive carboxylic acid derivatives. So with the thioesters, again, let's do our like mini resonance analysis. So again, I, I just showed R and R prime because they don't have to be the same. And in fact, this R prime for the sake of it down here, I can just even use, you can use an H, you can use a methyl group, whatever. So remember, uh, resonance. So we could definitely draw this. And I would say this is a non-trivial uh, resonance structure and it will definitely contribute to the overall hybrid. So now here's where we can start to see the effect of that resonance becoming a factor what you end up seeing is this is no longer just a situation where you can swing electrons up to the oxygen if this was just a regular ketone or aldehyde. Now we have electrons getting pushed onto the carbonyl carbons. You can see that it's not nearly as positive as it once was. However, with the thioesters, they're relatively reactive because if we were to boot this off, recall from our uh, acid base fundamentals, Sulfur is another row down on the periodic table. It's a little bit larger. It can handle negative charge because of its size. So the leaving group is good, even though the positivity of the carboxylic or the, the, the carbonyl carbon is reduced. Now, remember, oxygen and sulfur are on the same uh, column, same family as the, in the periodic table. So everything we just said for the thioester is true for the ester, except your leaving group is just not as good because, you know, right, you still have the resonance pushing electrons onto the carbonyl carbon, reducing its partial positivity. And in terms of uh, leaving group, in terms, oh, let me just get this down. And in terms of the leaving group, right, we'd be kicking O minus off, which is essentially like hydroxide. So the leaving group is better here versus here because of the size of the sulfur atom versus the smaller size of the oxygen atom. But what I want to end with and spend a little bit more time on is the amid, because what you see here, right, up until now, the resonance has been a factor, but with the amid, the resonance is extremely, the, the, the hybrids you see are very, uh, you know, they contribute a lot to the overall hybrid. Nitrogen is not as electronegative as oxygen. So what you see in the resonance is you see that this hybrid in particular contributes significantly to the overall hybrid. So what you see is that the effect of the resonance means that you are 
really decreasing the partial positivity of the carbonyl carbon. This carbon is not nearly as, you know, tantalizing to a nucleophile. It's not as, it's not, you know, flashing off some mega partial positivity. Nucleophiles very turned off uh, to attacking at this position. As a result, right, of this hybrid also being a very uh, significant contributor, this bond actually exhibits a lot of double bond characteristics because it's kind of like a one and a half type, uh, like one and a half bond, if you will. And, and what that's evidenced, you know, the evidence that supports that is that if you look at an amide with lab equipment, you can see that there's hindered rotation about this bond axis. And it's because, right, with double bonds, that's a set of parallel p orbitals that need to stay parallel to one another, right? You can't have a perpendicularness to it. And it's not a full-fledged double bond, but there's a higher barrier, energy barrier, to actually rotating because of the double bond characteristics. Uh, and I'm trying to think, is that all I wanted to say about amides? Oh, last thing, the leaving group, right, for the amides. This, right, if we kick this off, that would be like kicking off NH2 minus. Now, I'm going to, again, hit you with some more acid-base stuff, but remember, NH3, ammonia, has a pKa of roughly 35, high, mid-high 30s. If we were to force this to be an acid, then we would get NH2 minus. So if we wanted to think about the stability and reactivity of the conjugate base, this is a terrible acid. Forcing it to be acid, an acid, right? This would be a weak acid. Forcing it to be an acid would mean the conjugate base is wicked strong and crazy reactive, not stable. So the leaving group for amides, awful, so bad. So because the resonance really decreases the partial positivity of the carbonyl carbon and the leaving group is not good, that's why amides come in dead, 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 dead distant last in terms of carboxylic acid derivative reactivity. Okay, gang, thank you for following me from right to left, from most reactive to least reactive. I hope if carboxylic acid, um, carboxylic acid derivative reactivity was something that was confusing you, hopefully, you know, at least knowing what to look for in terms of how electrophilic, how partially positive the carbonyl carbon is, and the quality of the leaving group you have present uh, helps you, you know, solving ranking problems, uh, you know, concept explanation problems, anything of the sort. If you're, you know, if you found this video, if you're new to Geochem and you're just waiting on in to carboxylic acid derivative land, check out some more videos. I have videos spanning OCHEM 1, OCHEM 2. Uh, and for all of my seasoned vets that are just watching on through, thank you again for watching. Make sure to check out the website, geochem.io. There are associated worksheets and solutions completely free. And no matter what, I hope to see you all in the next video.